this problem, I'm going to explain how to do the Riemann sum with and without the actual picture itself. So watch the whole thing if you want to kind of see how to do that. But as I read through this problem, it's talking about this hot air balloon. It mentions the graph of R, the radius of the hot air balloon is concave down. So I kind of underlined that thinking that might be important. These are the derivatives here. This is how fast that hot air balloon um, is expanding inside. And then also it tells me the radius of balloon is 30 feet when T is equal to five. I have no idea how I'm gonna use it at this point, but this is giving me a point. Like when T is equal to five, that radius is equal to 30. So at some point I'll probably utilize that. All right, so let's just do one thing at a time. The key phrases is what you wanna pick out on this one. It says estimate the radius of the balloon and then it says tangent line approximation. So when I see that, that tells me I'm about to find the equation of a tangent line. So like we said, we got when t is five, the radius is 30, there's a point. And if you wanna do the slope, then that's your derivative. So the slope at t equals five, the derivative is equal to two, so my slope is equal to two. And then the equation of a tangent line, we all know how to do that. Do your point slope form, y minus your y value equals your slope times x minus your x value. That is your tangent line. And then you're supposed to use this to approximate what, what the radius of the balloon is after 5.4 seconds there. So just take that 5.4, plug that in place for the x. And then I got that was like 0.8 right there because it was 0.4 times 2, move the 30 over, your y is equal to 30.8. I believe this is a no calculator problem. So just practice that without the calculator. So that's the first part of that. Now, the second part of that <clears throat> is something that you know, you probably had a question on right now, but we're gonna get better and better with these because you're gonna see these more in the future. Anytime it has us use a tangent line approximation and is asking us whether that estimate is a greater than or less than the actual value, what you're gonna do is use the concavity, right? And that's why it tells us this curve is concave down. So think about this, like if you have a curve that's concave down, that's over here, that's spilling the water. All the tangent lines that you draw are above that actual curve. And so the point that you found, that 30.8 is right here on the tangent line, that's above the actual curve, which is down here. So the actual y value is on the curve, but because it's concave down and spilling the water, the tangent lines are all above it. If it was concave up and holding the water, the tangent lines would be below it. So your tangent line approximation would have been an underestimate. But since the tangent line is above the curve, that's why this estimate is actually greater than the true value since the curve is concave down. So anytime they're talking about tangent line approximations being an under and over estimate, that's what they want to use is use that concavity issue. Part B is a normal related rate problem. It says find the rate of change of volume. We know in symbols that means dv dt. We've done a lot of harder problems than this, but they give us the volume equation for that sphere. And so we're gonna take the derivatives. We're gonna go dv dt, multiply by the power, decrease the power by one. So you get this four pi r squared, but we just did derivative r's with it. So you got to tag on the dr dt and then you plug stuff in. So it says when t is equal to five, we know when t is equal to five, that radius is equal to 30. So I plug the 30 in for the r, and then dr dt is the derivative of the r with respect to time. dr dt and r prime of t is the same exact thing. This is the derivative of r with respect to time. This is the same thing as dr dt, the derivative of r with respect to time. So is that t equals five, that r prime or the dr dt is equivalent to two, and then you had to do that without the calculator. So I did like 900 times four, I knew that was 3,600, and then 36 times two has no 72, so I got 7,200 pi. And then it's how fast the volume is changing. So how fast is changing the dvdt, that's gonna be the cubic feet per minute. It's gotta be cubic units when it's the volume right there. If it's just the radius, then it's just like single units, like feet per minute there. <clears throat> now letter C, we're gonna see these all the time they're always going to give us an integral and say approximate the integral using a, a right Riemann sum, a left Riemann sum, or a midpoint Riemann sum, or a trapezoidal sum. So a Riemann sum means they're going to have us draw in rectangles, find the areas of the rectangles. And I'll show you what it means by right and left. And I'm also going to show you how to do this without the picture whatsoever. So I just did this because in the future, I just want you to go straight to these numbers right here and get that answer. But I just want to be a little bit more detailed at the beginning here showing you where it comes from from the actual picture and then showing you where it comes from without the actual picture there. So um, trapezoidal sum, you have to do the error form for a trapezoid. Remount sum, you're doing rectangles, but you could do all these without the picture. So let me just do a little problem here. What I did, I did a rough sketch of these points. 
And then here's what it means by a right remind sum. That means they want you to start at the right side of your interval and you're supposed to draw it up to the curve and then you draw your height over and then you go stop it at the next increment and then you go up to the curve. Once you hit the curve, you draw the height of the rectangle over and you draw it up to the curve, draw the height over, draw it up to your curve, draw the height over, go up to your curve, draw your height over. And then those are your rectangles. And you can find the area of each one and then see this height right here, that two, that height of that thing was equal to four. So that first rectangle area would be like two times four. And then if I do this area here, this is gonna be three for the base. And then the height would be like this point here. See how this point is on the curve and it corresponds to the height of that rectangle. So at, at T equals five, the height of this thing is equal to two. So I would go like three times two and I could do the area of each one of those rectangles right there. When it says a left Riemann sum, Left Riemann sum means you start at the left side of the interval. So we'll start at zero. We'll start at zero. You'll start at the left side of the interval. That's where you draw it up to your curve. And then once you hit the curve, that's when you draw the height over and you stop it at that next increment. And then you go up to the curve, draw the height over, up to the curve, draw the height over, up to the curve, draw the height over, up to the curve, draw the height over. And then you could just kind of connect them and then make your rectangles that way and then find the area of each one of those rectangles. So like when I do the area of this first rectangle, this base is two. And then the height of that thing was when x equals zero, that would be like my 5.7. And then I'll say, okay, this one is gonna be three. And then the height of that one was gonna be four. And I could just find the area of each one of those rectangles. Now I always used to draw the pictures. It would help me until I came across a problem one year where part of the graph was above, part of the graph went below. And when it switched, I wasn't quite sure which height to use. And I got confused a little bit. And then I just kind of studied these patterns and realized you don't need the picture whatsoever to do a right or left Riemann sum. So let me just share with you. Now I actually will do both. <clears throat> All right, let me kind of explain it first and then we can actually write that down so you have it. When I do a right Riemann sum, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do 0.5 times the distance between 11 and 12, which would be one. And I would go plus 0.6 times the distance between seven and 11 would be four. And then I'll go plus 1.2 times the distance between the five and seven, which is two, plus two times three, plus four times two. That's a right Riemann sum. So that would be the height of that last rectangle the width of that would be equal to one. And then this would be the height of the second to the last rectangle. The width of that would be equal to four. And that's, you know, you could compare it to the rectangles right there. Like that first thing would be a height of one, I'm sorry, a height of the 0.5, and then it has a width of one. So that's why we're doing 0.5 times that one right there. So if I write this down, a right Riemann sum, here's what we got going on here. So let's just kind of do that from scratch here. So if I do a right Riemann sum, this is a right Riemann sum. Uh, I'm going to take 0.5 and I'm going to times that by the one, the difference between the 11 and the 12. And I'm going to go plus the 0.6. I'm going to times that by the distance between the 7 and 11, which is 4. And I'll go plus the 1.2 times the distance between the 5 and the 7, which is 2. And I'll go plus the 2 times 3 and then plus the four times it by the two. And then that's your right Riemann sum. And then just for fun, we didn't have to do this on this problem, but just for fun, let's do a left Riemann sum without the actual rectangles here. So the left Riemann sum, let me just say the first couple first and then we'll put it right. I'm gonna start with this left-hand side, this height. I'm gonna go 5.7 times it by the distance between the zero and the two. So I'll go 5.7 times two plus four times three plus two times two plus 1.2 times four plus 0.6 times one. So hopefully that pattern kind of works in your head and here we'll put that in right. So again, I'll go 5.7 times it by two and I'll go plus the four times it by the distance between the two and the five, which is three. And then we'll go plus the two times it by the two plus 1.2 times four and then the last one would be 0 0.6 times one. That would be your left Riemann sum. Can't exactly show you the midpoint Riemann sum on this particular problem. You'll see that in the future, but a midpoint Riemann sum, like that base would still be two, but they would have to give us the height in the middle of that. So they'll say, hey, at X equals one, the height of this might be equal to five. So I'll still do two for the base, but I'll times it by the five. 
they'll give us the middle of this is like three and a half. They'll give us that height is like 3.4, right? And then so I'll still take the three for the base, but I'll times it by the height at that 3.5 number, which is that three. So we'll see at midpoint remount some in the future and I'll explain that. And then I think I have another video explaining how to do the remount sum in the future without the pictures as well. But I just want to try to get that all out of the way. So in the future, we won't have to spend as much time on there. It'll go a little bit quicker. So the right remount sum, you can kind of practice that on your own. <clears throat> but I'm taking the 0.5 times the 1, the 0.6 times the 4, the 1.2 times the 2, the 2 times the 3, and then the, the two, the four times the two right there. And then no calculator on this one. So you just gotta be careful how you're adding up all those things. You get the 19.3. And then notice how you're integrating R prime. We know when we integrate R prime, that's gonna give us the radius. And so that's how I knew that that was 19.3 feet. It was just feet. It wasn't like feet per minute. It wasn't how fast something was changing. It was just the radius right there because you integrated the R prime. So the feet per minute drop off and it's just gonna be the feet. And then it says explain the meaning of that and I just put the radius increase 9.3 feet during that 12 minute span. So you gotta utilize the zero and the 12, those numbers attach your integral um, when, when, it, when, it, when they ask you for the, you know, be as specific as possible. And then the last part, we'll be experts at this too if we just study these a little bit. It says, is your approximation in part C greater than or less than the actual integral? Now, as you look at the picture, we did a right Riemann sum. See how all those rectangles are below your actual curve. So your integral would actually be everything from the curve to the x-axis. And we're missing all those gaps right there. So we know by looking at the picture, that's an underestimate. They don't want to hear it's an underestimate because the rectangles are below the actual curve. What they want to hear is what this curve is doing. You got to say whether that original curve is increasing or decreasing. You got to say what this thing is doing. All right, and so I put less since that r prime of t is decreasing right there. And let me just kind of expand upon that a little bit. I got some pictures down here, but the decreasing, if you take any decreasing function, right, it doesn't matter the concavity, whether it's concave up or concave down, and you do a right Riemann sum, all right? So if I start at the right side of this interval, I go up to the curve, draw the height over, up to the curve, draw the height over, see how those rectangles are below the curve? That's an underestimate. Even if it's a decreasing function, it's concave down. If it's at a right remount sum, I start at the right side, go up to the curve, draw the height over, up to the curve, draw the height over, up to the curve, draw the height over. Again, all those rectangles will be below the actual curve. And then the opposite would be true if you take an increasing function. Like if you have an increasing function like that, and you do a right remount sum, if you start at the right side of your interval, you draw it up to your curve, draw the height over. We'll see how a right remount sum then would be an over approximation right there. So if I did this problem, without the picture, I didn't have the picture to look at where the rectangles were above or below. I would just look at these numbers. I would realize that these numbers are going down and I would just make myself any generic decreasing function and it doesn't matter the concavity. And we did a right Riemann sum. So then I would say, okay, a right Riemann sum means I start at the right side of the interval, I'll drive up to the curve, draw the height over, up to the curve, draw the height over, up to the curve, draw the height over. And then I could note of myself, hey, all those rectangles will be below. It doesn't even have to be those exact points or that exact curve. It doesn't matter if it goes above or below the x-axis, just any decreasing function, a right Riemann sum would be an underestimate. And if I did a left Riemann sum and you start up the left, you draw up to the curve and draw your height over, then the left Riemann sum would be an overestimate on a decreasing function. It actually be an underestimate on an increasing function. Because if you look at an increasing function, if you did a left Riemann sum, you would go up to the curve, draw the however, all those rectangles would be below right there. So hopefully that makes sense and we study that a little bit and you apply that to the future problems because this is the type of stuff that those little things, if we keep studying those, you're gonna see more of them and that, that could be just those little details right there is gonna be what separates us from a bunch of other people right there if we kind of say it doesn't be good. So again, you have to say, you know, know that the rectangle is gonna be below, so I said an underestimate or less than that. And then you gotta say what that thing is doing, increasing or decreasing. They don't wanna hear because the rectangles are below the curve. You gotta say what that thing is doing. It depends on that. Sweet and sour.